Hey guys, welcome to my Animal Adventures YouTube channel and in this video I want to show you how to easily convert a beverage cooler over to a reptile egg incubator. And I actually have the six foot tall egg incubator over here that I converted and I hatched almost a hundred ball python hatchlings out of it. And if you look on YouTube there's a lot of people that really complicate the conversion of a beverage cooler over to an incubator and I'm going to show you the easy way to do it. Okay, so first I want to give you a quick tour of this incubator. And it was actually a beverage cooler that a guy bought and had delivered to his house. And the compressor was bad, brand new out of the box. And he sold it to me as a, as a broken, non-functional. He actually sold it on Craigslist. And I bought it and it was fantastic for my purposes. And he's like, you're using it for what? <laughs> for snake eggs? <laughs> That's a lot of snake eggs. And let me tell you, we can fit actually 18 egg boxes in here uh, side by side and, and stack them up. And actually, what I actually did is I put little zip ties on the shelves so the shelves wouldn't move around. I found that the shelves are just kind of sitting on these little brackets here. And it seemed like, you know, if, if I hit them wrong, they would pop off and these little these little clips would come off. So the first thing I did is I went through and I t attached them all with zip ties. And I left the lights on and it, that's pretty much the only thing that works. There's a little switch up here that actually switches the different lights on, the top and the bottom. And other than that, I disconnected everything else. And let me kind of show you in the back how I how I rig this up. It's it's a pretty thick uh, cooler here. It's pretty wide. And actually down here in the back is where you have to get to all the electronics. And let me show you uh, the inside and what I actually did to disconnect the electronics. So I actually took the front panel off first. And the way I did it is I put a Phillips screwdriver through this hole back to these screws. Just loosen the screws a little bit and then it just slides right off of this bracket. You just pull up and slide it right off. And what I actually did is I went through and I disconnected the power for everything I could find. For example, this is the little computer control that pretty much controls the whole thing. And I just disconnected the power from that module. And I kind of did the same thing. I just went through and disconnected the power from everything that I could find. And I pretty much did one at a time and made sure the lights still work. <laughs> and, and other than that, I just want everything disconnected. And if you look online, what a lot of people do is they'll actually go through and disconnect all of the guts for the whole thing and take, you know, the compressor out and the fans and all the electronics and everything. And I really found there's really no reason to go that depth into taking everything out just unplug everything and then <laughs> and then you know maybe uh, down the road you could actually fix it and convert it back to a cooler maybe it's actually not the compressor maybe you just blew a fuse or something and uh, and you can get it back running but I just thought it was really easy just to go through disconnect everything that, is, that you can find one at a time until you have the lights running and that's about it and it was a really easy fix for me so here's what it looks like from the back if you take the back off and this is basically the compressor and everything else this looks like it has a little water tray here to catch the the water from the the inside if you have condensation and then you have all the electronics over here and and I actually went through, it's been about a year and a half since I did this, and I was actually disconnecting some of these, and I believe this right here is for the lights. And uh, there's really nothing else you can really disconnect back here. I think pretty much all I did was disconnect the two wires from the control panel up front, and it pretty much shut the whole thing down except for the lights. Really easy. All right, so now that you have the electronics disconnected, all except the lights, where you need to add your own heat source to, to control the temperature. And originally what I did is I actually used just one heat pad in the back, and the heat pad only goes like from, actually from here down to, all the way down to, to the bottom. That's, that's the first pad that I actually had in there. Just a really, uh, really, um, it's, it's just a really thin material that actually heats up and controls the heat. And you, you, you hook it up to a thermostat that controls it. And actually I started with just this one and it wasn't enough. So then what I did is I added a second one to the back and I just kind of had them left over for when I used to put them under my aquariums for my snakes. And I actually had uh, differences in temperatures from the back to the front and side to side. It wasn't really enough. So then I decided to actually go with the heat strips on the side and I had these custom cut 
and put together from um, Reptile Basics and it goes all the way from the top and it comes all the way down the sides. Of course you have to take the shelves off and then they actually will attach the, the electric cord right on on the on the heat strip. They actually uh, it just plugs right into this into this power strip here. So this is basically all the power uh, from all the heat strips in the whole incubator here. And then what I do is I plug it into my VE100 and this controls the heat and you can set it to any temperature. I set mine to 90 degrees. And then um, the other thing you really have to pay attention to is, is the, the probe. So a lot of people just put the probes like right in the middle of the incubator and the, the problem with that is is that these, these heat strips on the side will get hotter and hotter and hotter until this gets up to temperature. And the problem is, is if you have eggs here and eggs over here, especially if you have eggs right next to this, this is definitely going to get hotter than 90 degrees. It's going to overheat your eggs right here, uh, kind of waiting. It'll get too hot before this probe actually turns it off so what I do is I'll actually take this probe and you want to put it on the one that gets the hottest so you really want to put it right on the side and then tape it with some I, I just use clear packing tape and tape it right on here and this one gets the hottest and this one doesn't get quite as hot so you definitely want to control the strip that gets the hottest the quickest so you don't overheat any of your eggs. So the other thing I like to use is this battery backup and this will actually keep it running in case of a power outage you plug it into one side and one side's on batteries one side's just a surge protector and these are not really that expensive and you, so you can turn it on and it'll actually run on battery power and keep the incubator going during a power outage this is really good backup insurance for your incubator. So the other thing I really struggled with last year is the temperature gradient from the top to the bottom. And I found it's really a lot warmer on the top than it is on the bottom. And what I actually did to try to fix that is I put a little a couple little fans on the bottom and tried to circulate the air and the problem was halfway through the season my incubator kept overheating and I was like what is going on with my incubator and I finally found out it was the little motors on those two electric fans that were adding too much heat and it was actually keeping all the heat in there and overheating because of the fans I actually disconnected one fan and it brought the heat down to within uh, manageable levels but the other thing is is that I still even with the one fan I did didn't have enough circulation uh, throughout the whole thing to really keep it consistent uh, as far as temperatures from the top to the bottom and I know it has a fan up on the top but that thing is like <laughs> that thing is like a hurricane uh, I remember when this when I actually turned it on the very first time it was really loud and really powerful and it like blow my hair in, on my face it was it was pretty it was pretty intense so I definitely don't want the built-in fan I have to figure out something else a different way to control the temperature gradient from the top to the bottom and I'm thinking some other kind of a fan maybe something with a bigger blade and maybe a smaller body that won't overheat but I haven't quite licked that problem yet okay so for my egg box setup I pretty much landed on this and I didn't go back I actually went through quite a few different variations of egg boxes before I finally landed on this and this seems like uh, what a lot of people are using it's pretty much a foolproof way to set up your egg boxes and you don't have to worry about them for the whole two months of incubation and what I'm using is a really fine vermiculite I'm actually using this that I bought at Home Depot and what I really like about this vermiculite is it's really has really fine granules and some of it I use has bigger granules and it seems like it dries out a bit faster than the finer stuff and it doesn't really um, it, this stuff really compacts down it seems like and holds a lot more water than the than the coarser stuff and what I was doing last year I was actually I think it's like three and a half of these equals about 200 grams so I was actually weighing out exactly 200 grams of vermiculite and 200 grams of water and it would bring the level I would say just a little bit not quite halfway and then what I did is I bought these little grates 
online, actually straight from China <laughs> on eBay. And all I had to do was just cut the little corners right off so they would fit in here. And it fits right on here perfectly. And what you want to do is you want to keep the eggs off of the vermiculite, but you want to keep them hydrated. So I put the eggs, this would actually sit right on the, the vermiculite water mixture, and then I put the eggs right on top. And then what I do is I actually use this press and seal. And the press and seal, if you've ever used it before, <laughs> I've actually never really used it until I was doing snakes. And it actually has kind of a sticky side and a non-sticky side. So you, what you do is you, you take a piece off, uh, just big enough for the for the container here, and then you stick you stick it to the rim all the way around. And the funny thing is, is you would think there's not enough oxygen in there for the snakes, but I've actually had a whole tub full of baby hatchlings, and the the press and seal stuck on with no air holes. You don't let it breathe. You know, you don't like burp it or anything, and they're perfectly fine. I've seen people do it on the internet, and it just kind of blew me away that, you know, some people, it, it just by instinct, you would think you need to actually go in and let this plastic breathe so the snakes can breathe. But apparently it's it's permeable to, um, to air, but it's not permeable to water, and it holds the moisture for the whole two months, and you really don't even have to worry about it. The only thing that I really found is that um, if, you know, halfway through the breeding season, it seemed like this got a lot of moisture underneath it. And the thing you really want to watch is that this doesn't drip on your eggs. And a lot of times what I do is after a few weeks, I'd actually just take it off. And then if it dripped on the eggs, I'd kind of spot, uh, kind of wipe the eggs down, get all the moisture off. And i put a new piece on just so you wouldn't have the moisture raining down on the eggs and that's the only thing that uh, that really concerned me is the moisture coming down on the eggs during the incubation but other than that it worked fantastic last year okay so that is how I made my incubator from a beverage cooler and I'm hoping to use it here in a few weeks when my ball pythons start laying eggs so thanks for watching and I will see you next time